Today we're talking about how you can make time in your life for consistent writing. Now why am I talking about making time for writing and who am I to even weigh in on the topic? Firstly I'm making this video because I noticed that lately I've been struggling to make time for my writing. Which is funny and it's kind of a shame because I've been making my living from writing for many years now. For years I had the consistent habit of daily writing which was really good because it ended up making me quite prolific. My long term goal with my writing is to write for theatre, to write stage plays, ultimately write screenplays and to write novels consistently. At the moment I'm writing a few non-fiction books, I'm writing one on Aristotle, I'm writing one on uh, Shakespeare, but I noticed of late because I've got so many competing commitments that it was actually hard to squeeze my writing in again. I had to refresh, I had to make a plan of attack and I had to dive back in. And so I thought if I'm struggling with writing, maybe some other people who want to be writers or have written a little bit and then you know fall off the wagon or don't know how to even make time for writing might benefit from some advice. So the first thing you need to know about writing is that you need to do it consistently and you're not a writer unless you write consistently. This goes back to Aristotle's ideas about habits. We are what we consistently do. Now if you ever watch like movies or TV shows where the character is a writer, they're usually struggling with something called writer's block. If you ever watched Californication with Hank Moody, he spent more time talking about not writing and how the writing was so difficult for him than actually writing and yet he kind of had the gall to call himself a writer. Here's the thing, we are what we consistently do. So if you're not consistently in the habit of writing, you're not a writer. You need to consistently write and this is the same for anything. If you consistently read, you're a reader. If you consistently watch movies, you're a film lover. If you consistently paint, you're a painter. You can't define yourself by something something that you don't do. So that's the first thing. One, you need to make sure that you're doing the habit consistently, but easier said than done, how do we do that? We'll talk about that in a sec, but first I want to address a problem that I think a lot of people can relate to, and that's this idea of not being able to make time for writing because there's so many things that are more important. Now, what I noticed with lockdown and COVID was um, because it, it was like going back in time a little bit, uh, for me, my life became a lot more simple and I got more writing done and I was super prolific. But I could see how people might have the opposite. We've got more time than ever now, but we've also got quite a few more worries than we might have had before. Our jobs are no longer safe. Maybe some people lost some money. I know my income took a heavy hit during COVID and I think that's indicative of global trends. So obviously if you're worrying about money and you don't have the good fortune to actually be making a living from your writing, you might think, oh, it's not worth writing because you know I should be making some money. I should be focusing on other stuff. This is the thing, there's actually a lot of credence to that. So if you're struggling for money right now, you might want to focus on infrastructure and setting up a way to get some money coming in for yourself. Focus on getting a couple of different income streams. Focus on making a career or a job for yourself, a bit of uh, you know different side hustles, seeing what you can produce, where you can find different avenues to make money. And obviously, if you've got lots of conflicting commitments, it's really, really hard. So for me, for example, I'm putting out a lot of different courses, educational courses on how to write a personal statement for university, how to pass different entrance exams for Oxford, that sort of thing. But these courses take a lot of time. They take a lot of time with filming, with uh, coming up with the syllabus and brainstorming content. There's a lot of time editing, post-production. I haven't, I'm not even talking about marketing yet. It takes up a lot of time. Obviously, this conflicts with my long-term goal. My long-term goal is to write for you know, theatre and to write musicals and to write films. So I gave myself a goal. I said, right, we're going to focus on infrastructure for a year. We're going to focus on making sure there's a bit of a safety net. This is going to coincide with a move. I'm going to be moving house. I'm using the time spent on business and infrastructure in order to research. A lot of writers are frustrated when it comes to sit down to their book. They just want to dive straight into the writing and they find, well, actually, I've got to do all this research. Like if I'm writing a fantasy novel, I've got a world build. If I'm writing a thriller, a medical thriller, I've got to learn about medicine. Um, so it's frustrating because you go, Right. I'm not, I, you don't feel like you're actually writing in that time. You think, oh, this research is just taking up time. Well, hey, if you've got another goal and you're, you know, trying to hustle and get some cash together, well, during that time, you can bone up and learn and draft and plan and use that time creatively. It's not an obstacle. You're not writing. You're now undertaking the most important part of the writing process, in my opinion. People like to talk about J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter and how she went on that long train trip. Was it from Edinburgh to London or the other way around? And she put pen to paper and wrote the Harry Potter novels. Great, but she actually had planned five years before she put pen to paper, actual legitimate pen to paper. She'd been planning for five years, the entire universe. That's why there's such cohesion in those novels. So use any time that you can't spend writing creatively, research, look into things, read books on the craft. But during that time, you're gonna to wanna to keep yourself sharp. So what I did for myself, or the challenge I set for myself, is that I said, I'm gonna write one short story a week. That's actually very doable. And what I've done is I've said, right, you have to do 30 minutes minimum five days a week. You write for 30 minutes non-stop, you put a timer on. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it builds up. And I swear, you can 
write a short, at least one short story a week, if not a short story every couple of days, just by following that, just by committing to 30 minutes. And what I do is you want to create that habit. You want to latch it, either latch it onto another habit or stack it. So put it next to a habit that's already routine. For example, if you go to the gym the same time every day, you might want to stack that habit right after your workout or right in front, something like that, because you're already getting ready and in a routine. Or you can put it, in my opinion, at the time when you're most cognitively aware, most cognitively firing on all cylinders. For me, that's right after my second cup of coffee in the morning, sit down, get my 30 minutes right, and I feel nice and clean and ready to take on the day and ready to do some business. So whatever obstacles you have, you want to sort of pivot into them. So obviously this might mean you need to get up early. When I was writing fiction full time, I was also working an office job. I used to get up at five in the morning. I used to write until six, 6.30, and then I'd get ready for my day. I'd do a little morning routine, and then I'd go into my day having already written. So you might have to get up early. Uh, again, I'm not saying this is easy. Some people have children. Some people have a lot more commitments than me. Luckily, I don't right now. So you've got to kind of pivot into the obstacle and figure out ways to make it work for you. You've got to claim small snippets of time. Like everybody says, oh, in an ideal world, I'll have hours and hours to write. If you've got another job that's supporting you, you've got to just make it work. So sometimes you might have five minutes here and there, 10 minutes here and there. Sometimes you're relaxing in the evening and you're chilling out and you, you might actually just say, you know what, I'm chilling. Now I'm writing during this time while I can. And then someone interrupts you and then it's over, but at least you've got some words down. There's a technique that I used to do. I think I got this from James Scott Bell and it's called the morning shot. And that's like the first thing you do in the morning, you try and get a shot of words written, 250 words, 500, just stream of consciousness, anything, your work in progress, you just get it down. And then you can have a nightcap in the evening as well. This is in addition to anything else you do writing wise during the day. But if you, you know, if you're gonna write something first thing in the morning and right before bed, those words stack up over time and they add to the words that you're able to do during the day. So what I'm talking about here is minimum effective dose plus consistency. Work out the minimum effective dose, the minimum amount that you could do that's viable for you consistently and stick to it. Everybody can just do a one long slog writing session Sunday and then not do anything for weeks on end and complain about not having time, but carve out that time. I mean, it sounds a bit trite, it sounds a bit cliche. Oh, I don't have the time. No, you have to make it. But yes, you really do. And just try to make it, but make it easy to adhere to, make it simple, don't make it too obtrusive. If you haven't got four hours to write, like Dan Brown, then, you know, make do with 20, what, 20 minutes, I mean, not hours. Um, you've got to make it work for you, whatever stage of your life and career you're at. And if you're serious about it, if you're passionate about it, you'll get some time. You get some time because we waste so much time. And here's, here's how you can make time. Cull the commitments that you don't want to do. You have to start saying no to things. I often won't answer emails for weeks and weeks ahead of the time. I definitely won't answer emails if people are rude or people demanding. I get a lot of emails where people say, you've got to look at this product or you've got to look at this or yeah, we've got to have a meeting. Let's have a quick meeting. And I'm just like, no, if it's not going to make me money and it's eating into time when I could be better spent sharp in my craft, I'm not going to do it. Uh, so I'll only do things that I really, really want to do. I'll rarely do things out of obligation. Another tip is to start setting some goals for yourself and have some aims and have some clarity. Get really crystal about what sort of life you want to lead, what sort of writer you want to be and what you want to produce. Now for me, I got nice and sweaty. I went for a run. Uh, I got the blood pumping. I got breathing. I got oxygen, alkalized the blood, felt good about myself. And then I started to think, well, what sort of future do I want? What sort of writer do I want? Um, and then you, dream big, you know, don't put any cap on it, it's your time to daydream and fantasize. And I came to the conclusion that I'd like to do at least one non-fiction book a year and one novel and fiction. And I would like to do a smattering of short stories. Uh, I mean, obviously I've landed on doing a short story a week, but I think that's very, very feasible. Uh, Bray Bradbury used to do that. He used to write a short story a week. He used to try and write a different novel every month. He used to write a poem a day. He was he was very, very wildly prolific. So I thought, okay, one nonfiction book every, every year so that I don't get, you know, Sometimes you can get dusty uh, when you keep getting stuck into sort of fictional worlds over and over again and you need a refresh. Sometimes it's nice to step out of that. So I thought a fiction book and a non-fiction book. And then I thought long-term goals would be working on screenplays and working on scripts for the theater. And there's no real cap on them, but it's like a three year thing. But I set a date and from next year, I'll be hammering maybe once every quarter, I'll get a different script ready. And then not only that, but set goals for how you circulate these materials. It's all well and good to keep sharpening your craft, but you want to get good at publishing and shipping your works and stuff like that. Now with independent publishing, if you can't get a readership in a traditional way, you can do it yourself. It's 
it's a lot of work, but I would argue that the traditional publishing avenues is a lot of work too, perhaps more work. And what you could do is if you're writing a short story a week like me, then you just circulate it and you just find the magazines. There's still magazines that publish people. And then if you get a knockback and a rejection, which is normal, then you just give it to another magazine and you go round and round and round. And the more um, sort of short stories you build up, the more you have in circulation, the more chances you have that someone will go, yep, let's publish that. Now, another tip for writing more, and this seems counterintuitive, but it's really not, it's to read more. If you scale your reading up, you will write more if you're a writer. I've noticed the times when I get writer's block, which I try not to say I believe in, the times where I don't write are times when I also have a really fallow reading period and I'm not reading anything. Now, the times when I'm massively prolific as a reader and I'm binging through books and I'm reading a lot of books and I'm loving them is the time where I go, yeah, I wanna write. Like, especially I picked up a Haruki Murakami book and it's called After the Quake. And I just, there's something in Murakami's words that make me go, I can do this. Like I can do my own version. I, I mean, he he's a very special writer and I think he does this for a lot of people where he just empowers people. He makes people think they can be writers. A lot of writers don't do that. They just present the story. But something about Murakami, he's like the writer's writer. And I believe Stephen King is like this as well. Um, and so the more you read, the more you go, oh, that's cool. Or I would do something differently. Or, oh, that's a great way to, to create tension. Or I don't like this character. They're very surface. I would do them differently. Or I don't like the way this person presents women. It's not compelling enough. I would do it differently. So keep bolstering how much you read. I'd even say watch movies, watch good movies, listen to a lot of um, different music, jazz, classical, go to art galleries. Give yourself a lot of input and then you'll want to output if you're an artist. Another tip is to work in Pomodoros. Okay, I kind of already talked about working in snatches of time, but I won't do long, long slogs. I know that kind of goes contrary to deep work, but I do do deep work. Deep work is working in long, un uninterrupted batches of time. But for me, I'll work for 45 minutes, take a five to 10 minute break. If I can go again, I'll do another 45 minutes and take another break. This really, energizes me and keeps me going and I can go as long as possible. I do this for studying as well. I can go much longer taking frequent breaks than I can just doing a huge slog. So when you're writing, you wanna make sure there's a time and there's a deadline and there's a commitment. Like, okay, you might not want a certain word count goal. You might want a time goal. I, I find both have their benefits. It depends on your temperament, your personality, whether you want a word quota or not. I like recently just hitting the timer and just writing and just trying to challenge myself to be writing the entire time that the time is going. And then I look down, 30 minutes has passed, I got a thousand words, great. Another tip to get more writing done is to close the door. Again, I mentioned Stephen King already, I think he's talked about this technique on writing, is where you go into your office or whatever room or compartment of your existence that you designate as your office, it could be anything, you don't need a real office, but whatever you do, you're telling the world that you're getting serious now and you're about to sit down, knuckle down and do some writing. And what that means is you're not open for distractions. You turn the internet off if you can, turn your phone off, put it on airplane mode, flip it upside down, close the door. If you're living with family, loved ones, whatever, you tell people don't disturb me for X amount of time and you close that door. If you keep the door open, like again, the door is a metaphor, but if you keep the physical door open, people walk through, don't they? They see you're there, oh, you're there, you're not doing anything, I can talk to you and distract you. No, get some noise cancelling headphones. I've done a whole uh, article on which, which headphones are the best for introverted audio files. I recommend the Sennheisers for noise cancellation, uh, but I also like the V-Modders if you wanna listen to some music. Get yourself some binaural beats. I mean, the jury's still out on whether binaural beats are effective or not. I think they get me in the zone. Or listen to some pumping motivational music, Spotify has some really cool uh, soundtracks from like movies. So find the music that kind of gets you in the zone. Sometimes white noise works, but whatever you do, just close the door. And my last tip is to be public about it. I can't remember what writer did this. Is it Harlan Ellison? Either way, he set up shop, he took his typewriter and he sat in a bookstore window and people were passing him on the straight streets of Manhattan. I think this is the story. And he would type out a page furiously of the story and paste it to the window and people could come up and they could read his story in real time. He was publicly committing to writing a story. Now, a lot of people talk about how you should be quiet about your work and you shouldn't say too much because if you talk about the story, then you're basically telling the story and then you don't need to actually tell it. I do agree with that in sentiment. You must be careful who you tell your story to. And some people can shoot down your ideas, poo poo them. Sometimes even not being met with as much enthusiasm as your precious writing personality needs, uh, your precious just right and ego needs. Uh, sometimes not having enough enthusiasm can be just as bad as just being full on blank shot down. So you've got to be very careful who you show your works in progress to um, because that's important. But I do believe in this thing of committing somewhat publicly. Tell a friend, 
Get an accountability partner. Tell your actual partner. Tell your family if they're supportive. Show them the works. This takes a lot of courage. Develop that courage and start developing that thick skin. And the more you publicly commit, uh, the more likely you are to uh, keep and stick to your goals. Social accountability. There's a great app called Spa. I've used it many times. I've used it for writing challenges uh, where you basically you pledge some money. You've got to check in every day. Everybody's in the group together. And if you don't check in, you don't do your writing for the day, you t your wallet takes a hit of whatever amount, amount that you've agreed to. That's a really strong incentive. And then at the end of the, you know, the period, if it's a couple of weeks, uh, everyone who's kind of missed their check-ins, the money goes into a pot and the victors get to split it. So you've got social accountability and you've got a uh, loss aversion, which is actually much more of a strong psychological way of conditioning and motivating yourself than the promise of um, carrot, for example, carrot and stick. So you will work harder to avoid losing $50 than you will to get $50. Anyway, so those are just a couple of tips off the top of my head. They help me, I hope they help you. If you found this video useful, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe because that tells me to keep creating more content. Thank you very much for watching and happy writing.